осторожно, двери закрываются. Следующая станция Лерская. Для Hello, welcome to Culture TV. In this video, we'll be talking about public transport in Russia. I'll show you how to use it, I'll tell you what to look out for, and of course, I'll give you lots of useful phrases and very relevant vocabulary. Stay tuned. So this is lesson 56 of our online program, Let's Speak Russian, and this is the second part in our Travelling in Russia video series. If you haven't watched the last video, which is about flying, uh, so taking the aeroplane and taking the train in Russia, then I do suggest you do that first, and then you can move on to this lesson. We'll be following the same format as last time. I'll start by giving you some vocabulary, uh, useful phrases and questions that you can ask, and then we'll have a look at some footage where you can try to spot um, the key words and objects that we've been talking about. And I'll also talk to you about some uh, nuances and some general things about traveling. So we'll start off in Moscow um, and we'll go down to the underground. And as you probably know, or you might have heard, the Moscow underground all by itself is a complete museum in its own right. It is a full attraction and you could spend the whole day just in the underground um, purely because every station is just so beautiful, um, is so full of history and culture and it, yeah each station is just an exhibition um, and yeah there is indeed so much to see and unfortunately in this video I won't be able to uh, visit all the stations and talk to you about that but hopefully in the future we'll do a separate video on the Moscow underground but for now we're just going to look at the practical aspects of traveling uh, in the underground or indeed um, uh, in the subway or in the tube or in the metro whatever part of the world you're from but in Russian we say metro metro which is the shortened form of metropolitan 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 of course is the cognate there but in russian we say metro a station as you should know already will be stancia stancia and then linea linea is going to be a line so a line of the underground and indeed, if you have a look at the map of all the lines of the Moscow Underground, it will look very complicated. It is quite a large city and the Underground does run pretty much everywhere. If you're, if you're lost somewhere in Moscow, hopefully you won't be, but the Underground will definitely be able to help you out. Um, most stations are within a walking distance radius from wherever you are, so that, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, so the other thing that I will tell you is that, of course, all the signs and the map and indeed quite a few announcements sometimes are repeated in English. So um, in Moscow and in St. Petersburg, you won't be completely lost. You will, of course, be able to survive even if you don't know Russian. Uh, but do be aware that the further east you go, as a general rule, uh, the less English people speak. Um, so, yes, you do have to be careful. And in any case, you're here, I guess, to be learning how to uh, travel in Russian rather than in English because, um, well, I personally think that whenever you go abroad, it's nice to be able to speak to the locals in their language. Anyway, let's now have a look at the Moscow Underground itself. So here we are at one of the street level entrances to a station of the Underground. Uh, usually there are quite a few entrances. And remember, in Russian, we say вход, вход, as you can see above there. So then you'll get to this foyer where there are the ticket offices. Remember, in Russian, as you can see, we say касса, касса. And here you can speak to one of the cashiers who will uh, explain to you or give you some advice on which ticket is best to buy. Um, 
it is generally quite cheap, I have to say, uh, cheaper than in most European capitals at least. Um, and sometimes you might be better off just buying a Troika card. Now I'll talk about Troika a bit later, but it is basically just this um, traveling card on which you get a few discounts. And if you are staying in Moscow for, uh, well, at least a few days, it would make sense to buy one of these. But uh, yeah, we'll come back to this later. But yes, if, if you're not sure, then I do recommend uh, speaking to one of the cashiers who will give you some advice on that. So then you'll have to place your ticket onto a reader and you'll have to go through the turnikiepe, turnikiepe, which are the gates. And then you'll have to go down the escalator, escalator, which is of course the escalator, all the way down until you get to the platforma, platforma, the platform, of course. Very easy words so far. Now, of course, it can be quite hard to find your way around in the underground, especially in rush hour. What you're seeing now is probably as empty as it gets in the centre. Um, so, yes, do prepare for a um, crowded journey, we'll say. Um, and do prepare, of course, for your journey in advance and plan your route. However, you can, of course, follow the signs. As I said, many things are written in English. Um, but all the lines of the Moscow Underground, remember, line is linear. Um, they, all the lines have their own colour, name and number. The names are often quite long and hard to remember, so I recommend actually learning uh, or just remembering the colour and number of the line that you're going to be using. Because actually very often the signs showing the um, route to a certain platform uh, show you not the name of the line but actually the name of the station. And what's interesting is that if you have a look at the map uh, a bit closer, then when you have an interchange between two lines, it's not actually just one name of the whole station serving two lines, but it's actually two separate stations with two separate names. It's just that there is some kind of um, corridor between the two platforms. So here, for example, you can see a sign pointing to the Belaruskaya uh, station. Now, we are, of course, already at a station, but this is just pointing to the next uh, adjacent platform for a different line. And that line is, as you can see, the second line, and it has a green colour. Just for your interest, the line is called Zamaskvaryetske. So try remembering that. And so, yes, as I say, as long as you know the number and colour, you'll be OK. And here is one of the probably most famous uh, signs of the Moscow Underground. Um, this is probably the equivalent of the London Tube's Mind of the Gap. Uh, for the Moscow Underground, it's Nya Prislanyats, Nya Prislanyats, which means don't lean on the door. And this is actually an interesting point here. Um, in English, we're translating it with an imperative, so don't lean on the door. But in Russian, very often you can give an order or give a command just by using the infinitive. Nya, and then the infinitive, and that's it. And that's usually quite a formal or even harsh way of um, giving an order. Um, in public transport, of course, and generally in the street, that's fine if it's a sign. But if someone tells you uh, to not do something and they don't use the imperative, but they use an infinitive, then that is quite harsh. Um, very often that is associated with the army. And as you can see, there is also a Yedinaya Wi-Fi seat. So yes, free Wi-Fi in the Moscow Underground. However, um, it, it does drop in and drop out at times, of course, as you can imagine, because you are underground after all. And then before alighting the train, you will hear the very famous announcement. <laughs> Have a go at translating this yourself first, and then I'll show you what it means. Astarozhna means carefully. So uh, this is an adverb describing how a verb and action is carried out. But again, in this case, it is actually used as an imperative. Very often in Russian, you can use adverbs as imperatives to tell people to do a certain action in a certain way. For example, Astarozhna or Bystra. 
people might often, you know, shout to you, быстро, come on, quickly, that kind of tone. Uh, here, осторожно means be careful. Двери закрываются. Двери закрываются. Двери are the doors. Закрыть, as you might know, is to close. Закрываются, therefore, is a conjugation of a reflexive verb. So the doors are closing. They are closing themselves. So it's not the doors are going and closing something else. There's no um, subject and object here. It's just one subject. And the action is being carried out on them. Now, please excuse this grammar. If you're not here for grammar, then, you know, you don't need to worry, uh, worry about that too much. But basically, the doors are closing means that they are closing by themselves. Следующая станция. The next station, right? And then the name of the station. And then it's the same process. You go back up the escalator, leave through the exit, and you'll end up somewhere on the street. And now I think we're ready to move on to the next mode of transport, the tram. Now, I should point out that electric transport, so trams and trolleybuses, are way more common in Russia than they are in, well, at least the UK and probably the rest of the world, actually. And for some reason, they are associated with pensioners, um, probably because of the pensioners originally being given discounts on the um, trams and trolleybuses. And this mode of transport is usually um, a bit slower, a bit calmer. No one's rushing anywhere, really. Um, I don't know, but maybe that's just a stereotype. In any case, here is some useful vocabulary. So a tram will be tramvai. Tramvai. A ticket, very useful word, billet. Billet. Okay, stressed on the last syllable there. Now, in Russian, we have this uh, phrase here, стоимость проезда. Стоимость проезда, which means the cost of travel, basically how much it costs for a journey. And usually in buses, in trams, and in all the other public transport, you will see a big sign somewhere with this word, um, and then however much it costs. And as I said at the start, it is very cheap. Like, in, in most Russian cities, I think it's something like, what, 20, 25, 30 maybe rubles for a tram ticket. That is very little. You know, convert it to your currency and it's, it's not a lot. Marshrut is a route. Marshrut. Marshrut. Okay. And then we have this question. Сколько стоит проезд? Сколько стоит проезд? How much does it cost for the journey? And it might be useful to ask this question to either the driver, which will be водитель, водитель, or the conductor, кондуктор, кондуктор. Okay? Right, let's go and have a look at the trams in Russia. So here you can see a tram at its конечная остановка. Конечная остановка. Конечная is actually an adjective which means the final or last or terminating. And very often in Russian it's used on its own just to mean the last stop. And остановка is of course stop. It comes from the verb останавливаться. Останавливаться which means to stop. So you can also see that this is the number 10 tram. And in Russian, when referring to the number of the route of a tram, for example, then we rarely use the word number. We don't say номер 10, but rather we use the ordinal numbers. So десятый трамвай is what we would say. Десятый трамвай. And it would be девятый восьмой седьмой, and so on for the other numbers. Uh, we did have a look at ordinals in lesson 39 when we looked at dates, so do rewatch that lesson if you need a reminder. But here we are on the tram. This one is actually quite old, as you can see. Um, in Moscow and St. Petersburg, definitely there are often more modern ones, but in any case, I think it actually makes the uh, experience a bit more romantic <laughs> and for many um, as you we were saying pensioners um, it is uh, quite a nostalgic uh, experience really okay and while we're here i thought i'd mention to you the verbs to get on and to get off or to alight 
in Russian. And we actually use the verb to sit down, which is sadiza. Sadiza. It's a reflexive verb, and so, for example, if you wanted to say I got on the tram, that would be ya sil na tramvai. Ya sil na tramvai. And here, as you can see, we're using the preposition na. And it's in the um, accusative case because movement is involved here, right? So we're going from one place on to another in, in, in this uh, situation. From. And so if you also want to specify which route you've uh, got on, then you will say Я сел на десятый, на одиннадцатый, and so on. So we, we still use the same adjective, we don't need to decline it because it's in masculine form. And as you should remember, uh, in masculine, uh, for masculine inanimate nouns, nothing happens in the accusative case. And even if there were to be a um, transport, um, a, a feminine mode of transport, and as far as I know there aren't any, um, we would still use uh, th th this uh, masculine adjective. So, yeah, ya siel na, or ya siela na, and then just put in the ordinal number of the root, and that's it. If you want to say in the future tense, then ya siado na piati tramvai. Or, for example, if someone is telling you which route to take, saditis na shustoi autobus, or maybe saditis na metro na stanci. And then with na stance, there is the prepositional case because you're at the station. You're, it's a bit confusing, of course, but you are getting on the underground, so you're physically moving onto the train. But this process of getting on the train is happening at the station. And while you're at the station, you're kind of stationary there. So, yeah, that's just what we say. Saditis na metro na stance teatralne. For example. So now I can move on to the trolleybus now, the trolleybus. We have the exact same word in Russian, trolleybus, trolleybus. And um, now I'll probably talk to you about those uh, transport discount cards. In Russian we say transportne karta, transportne karta, okay. Um, and very often, as I said, you will get a discount or it will be cheaper if you use a card. So you might want to ask the question, A сколько стоит по карте? A сколько стоит по карте? How much does it cost with a card? Now let's have a look at this question in a bit more detail. So you can, of course, omit the A at the start. Uh, you'd probably include this A if you had asked a question previously, so there has already been a dialogue. Maybe you could have asked, сколько стоит проезд, right? Um, then the conductor would have given you a price. And then to carry on with the dialogue, you would have said, hmm, but what about with a card? Hmm, а сколько стоит по карте? That kind of idea. Um, and we're using по карте rather than карты, so we're not using the instrumental case here just because this is what we say traditionally. You can say сколько стоит um, заплатить карты. That's fine. But um, when asking the price, we tend to say по карте. Okay. And here, of course, we've got the uh, prepositional case. So now for this Troika card, which is basically a discount card. Uh, it's very similar to the Oyster card used for the um, transport system in London. Uh, probably there are equivalents all over the world, really. Uh, but essentially, you buy the card, um, I think it's something like 50 rubles, and then you just um, keep adding on to your balance there. And um, you just scan it in every time you want to use the underground or whatever transport it may be. It works on all transport around Moscow. And it, it does work out cheaper per journey if you use a card. But there are also many other options, many types of uh, tariffs for like a, a daily ticket or a monthly ticket or something like that. As I said earlier, if you need any help or advice, it's best just to speak to the cashier. OK, now let's go and have a look what the trolleybuses are like. So I do remember this trolleybus journey in particular because it was, well, as you can see, festively decorated with a Christmas tree, or rather a Novogodnya Yolga, Novogodnya Yolga, so a New Year tree. 
Um, but anyway, as you can see, the trolleybus is quite a slow mode of transport and it's not that popular. But actually, it does reduce your carbon footprint. It's quite environmentally friendly. Um, but then again, having said that, um, any mode of transport is better than using uh, private vehicles like cars. Okay, so let's say you got on the trolleybus, and how would you say that in Russian, by the way? Yes, я сел or я села на троллейбус. If you want, you can specify the route. And then maybe you want to ask uh, just to confirm whether you're going uh, in the right direction. Uh, maybe you can ask the conductor. Троллейбус едет до... And then wherever you want to go. Very often we just uh, ignore the first word and we just say Едет до... And then wherever you're going, wherever your destination is. Now do bear in mind that до is a preposition that triggers the genitive case. Okay? So, for example, Едет до центра. Does it go to the center? Едет до улицы. And then whatever the street name is. До проспекта, до бульвара, до района, and so on and so on. So use the genitive case with до. Or another way of asking this question is Я смогу доехать до? Я смогу доехать до? Will I be able to get to? And then your destination. The answer might be yes, but also uh, you might get a reply Вам Придется пересесть. Вам придется пересесть. That means you will have to change. It comes from the verb пересаживаться, uh, the perfective of which is пересесть. That means to change. So you can see the um, the root of the verb is сесть, again from садиться. It's just that we've added a prefix at the start and it means to kind of um, re-change or change. Uh, trans change even so you're going from one transport from sitting on one transport to going and sitting on a different one so yeah it basically means to um uh, to, to to change yes and the noun for that will actually be пересадка пересадка and that means a stopover layover or change so we can actually use this with um traveling by aeroplane or by train you might even hear answers like Вам будет проще доехать, and then some more instructions. So it will be easier for you to take maybe a different route or a different mode of transport, yes? Вам будет проще. So we're using the dative case here. It will be easier for you, okay? Мне проще. Мне легко. Мне тяжело. It's easy for me. It's hard for me, okay? Do remember that. And now I think we're ready to move on to the bus now, which isn't that different, really. The words are all very similar. We say автобус. Автобус in Russian. Autobus, yeah, pretty much. Uh, the only thing I'll draw your attention to is that in Russia, it's not just the larger buses that are quite common, but it's also minibuses that are used in public transport. So they're not always private in Russia. In fact, minibuses are very common um, in, in the Russian cities and they are referred to as маршрутка. Маршрутка. That means a minibus that has a route. Yeah, do you see the word маршрут, route? So a minibus that follows a certain route. So it's actually used for public transport. And they are often a bit more expensive, maybe because they're faster, but they are actually um, very often private rather than um, state-owned. So yes, this is public transport, but it is actually run by private companies. And yeah, the word for public transport in Russian will actually be общественный транспорт. Общественный транспорт, okay, public transport, bit of a mouthful. And there are a few other subdivisions and types of buses that we'll have a look at in just a moment. So here we are at the Astanovka, Astanovka, the stop, the bus stop. And I just included this um, clip for you just to illustrate that it is very often not at all pleasant to travel on buses in Russia or any mode of transport. Um, as I was saying, the Moscow Underground is very rarely empty. 
uh, as MC as was shown, usually in rush hour it's just <laughs> impossible almost to um, fit on the carriage or fit on the bus here as you can see. And to be honest I do criticise this, um, it's, it's not really nice to travel in those conditions but people do need to go to different places, people have things to be doing, places to be at, so you know people just tend to uh, grin and bear it. Um, however, if you do travel um, outside of peak hours, it shouldn't be that bad. But on this bus here, we can of course breathe much more freely. Um, so yeah, there at the top, you can see that same word again, astarožne, yeah, which means be careful or attention. Stupenie are the steps, so beware of the steps. Now, one other useful question might be, как часто ходит автобус? Как часто ходит автобус? How often does the bus run? Um, now, in English, we use the verb run to talk about um, really the interval at which the bus um, arrives at each stop. So, how long do you usually have to wait for a bus? In Russian, we just use the verb um, to go. Now, this is really interesting because, as you know, buses are um, transport. It's a mode of transport, yet we are still using the version of the verb to go as if we're walking by foot. Now, this is quite confusing, and this is probably just an exception. We use the verb hadith when we're talking about not necessarily the motion of the bus, but rather, yeah, as I was saying, the interval, um, the, the, the timetable of the bus, right? So you can say, как часто ходит автобус, троллейбус, трамвай, whatever, to ask, well, how frequently does this bus even run? Yeah, how, how, how frequently does it operate? Yeah, that's probably the better way. And, um, you know, we have words like редко, часто, yeah, adverbs that mean rarely or often, or каждые 10 минут, every 10 minutes, каждые полчаса, every half an hour, and so on and so on. Maybe if there is a lunchtime break, then you might get the answer сейчас у них перерыв, or maybe they'll specify, сейчас у них обеденный перерыв, it's their lunch break now, and in smaller cities this tends to happen where, you know, a particular route uh, or mode of transport generally is just not operating because it's their lunch break. Um, and yes, there we go, I think we can now move on to the next mode of transport. And to your surprise, this is actually the ferry, yes. Now, I included this just for fun, really. Um, very rarely will you see ferries being used, but in the Russian cities that are either surrounded by or have a river flowing through them, um, ferries are uh, sometimes used to um, connect the two uh, banks of, of the river, the two sides of the city. Or in um, the video clip that we're going to see, it actually connects the uh, city centre with a, a road that leads to a more rural area, basically. And so if you remember, we spoke about Dacha in Russian a while ago, uh, in, in our lessons a while ago, which is the, which is the summer houses that people have. Um, then this, this um, ferry that we're going to see actually transfers passengers from the city to the other side of the river, which is where the countryside starts. Um, but yeah, generally ferries are quite rare. In Russian we say parom, or we have another word, переправа. Переправа and parom both mean ferry. And you will have to check the расписание, расписание, the timetable in advance, because um, especially if it's a very broad river, then uh, it's likely that uh, the timetable will not be, intervals will not be that frequent. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by this ferry. So as you can see, this is a very small vessel crossing a very narrow river. Yes, by Russian standards, this is pretty much a stream. If you've ever seen the Volga River, that is, you know, very wide. It's absolutely massive. Um, so, yes, in comparison, this is just a little brook. Um, but nevertheless, a ferry is, of course, needed. And here you can see the, um, well, I say pensions, yes, because very often it is indeed the older uh, citizens that tend to go to their dachas in the summer. Uh, but not always, then, of course.
And lastly for today, we are going to talk about travelling by car. Um, now, this isn't public transport, strictly speaking, but nevertheless, there is some vocabulary that you might find useful, particularly if you go and rent a car in Russia. So, a car itself will be машина, машина, you probably know that already. But we do have a more formal or official way of saying car, and that will be автомобиль, автомобиль, okay? A road will be дорога, дорога. But if it's a larger road, more like a motorway or a primary road, then we would say шоссе, шоссе. Okay, it's the main road. The word for license is права, права. Now pay attention, this is in plural. Uh, in Russian, the word for license is always plural, okay? Права. If for whatever reason you are stopped by a Russian traffic warden, uh, you might get asked to show your документы, документы which means your papers, so your documents, again, your license, um, maybe even your passport. So whenever you're driving, I do recommend carrying your passport with you as well. And if you're considering getting your vehicle insured, uh, this is probably only if you're going to purchase a vehicle in Russia, um, then in any case, that will be страхование, страхование, okay? Or I don't know, maybe you're going to get travel insurance. That will also be страхование, okay? Now, there are, of course, many more useful words for motorists. I can't cover everything, but these are just the ones that I've selected. So, let's go and have a little bit of a ride around some roads in Russia, and we'll say what we see. So, here we're driving in a rural slash urban area. So, this is approaching the countryside, but we're, yeah, we're kind of on the outskirts of the city, following the 107 bus. How would you say that in Russian? Стосідмой автобус. Yes, стосідмой автобус. Yes, so a bus is uh, masculine, so стосідмой. Yes, it's an ordinal number. Okay, so what kind of street signs can we see here? Well, of course, we have a traffic light, first of all. In Russian, we say светофор. Светофор. Stop, yeah, self-explanatory. And then we have a uh, sign for a crossing, a uh, pedestrian crossing. In Russian, we will say переход. Переход. You might also hear people adding пешеходный переход. Пешеходный переход. Okay. Uh, here we're at some crossroads. In Russian, we say перекресток. Перекресток. And to the right, you are seeing a few of these dacha that we were talking about. Um, so you can get whole settlements, whole villages full of these dachas. Or some of these here are likely just to be private homes. Um, as you know, most Russians tend to live in flats. And only some, um, well, it's not that they don't afford to, but some just choose to live in the countryside in their own houses. Some of these houses might have been even built by the owners themselves. Uh, you do you do tend to find that in the countryside. Here you can see a bus stop. How would you say that in Russian? Yes, it would be Astanovka. Astanovka. Now to the left you can see the prices for fuel, so this must be a petrol station. In Russian we say A Z S A Z S, which is an abbreviation of after Zapravochne Stance. After Zapravochne Stance. Uh, which means basically auto, or in this case it means car, filling or fueling or refueling station. But people shorten it down to just zapravka, zapravka. And we also use the verb zapravlyatsa, zapravlyatsa, which means to refuel. All right then, I think we'll leave it there. We've had a look at quite a few modes of transport, lots of vocabulary, um, hopefully quite a few useful phrases for you. And yes, if you have any other questions, anything else you'd like to know, anything you found interesting, uh, some more details you'd like to find out about, then please feel free to leave a comment below. Alternatively, you can send us an email or write, us, uh, or write to us in social media. The details for all of that are below in the description. 
So I hope you found this lesson useful and interesting. Uh, we're almost done with our course, just a few more lessons to go. Uh, thank you for staying with us. Thank you for your patience and your hard work. See you next time. Goodbye.